Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new camp build. Today we are in the Cranberry Bog and we're going to make use of the new brick set that is the rank 100 reward for season 8 to build a kind of country house. So let's jump to it. Okay then, yeah, so this new brick set is the rank 100 reward for season 8, and it's pretty cool, it's a bit finicky at times. we put together a pretty nice kind of country house, and things come out quite well. So, as you can see, we are over in the Cranberry Bog, that's where we are right there, just on this main road running through. That's Quarry X3 and the Veiled Sundew Grove right there, kind of between the two. We took us just down the way there. It's a good spot this, reasonably flat. There was a bit of an issue with some uh, random encounters and stuff and enemies sort of wandering down that road, so do regularly have to defend the place, so not perfect in that regard, but uh, otherwise it's quite a good spot. Nice and open and flat, as we can see. So, to kick things off, we're going to get the foundations in, funnily enough. I'm just going to sort of figure out roughly where I want it, which is what I'm putting this one in for first, and then we'll kind of uh, leapfrog it back a little bit and get things set up. So what we're going to do here is kind of create the front aspect. So I'm going to have a section that's two foundations wide at the, on the corner there, then a recessed section here that is three across, and then another section on this side that is two out. And then across the back we'll add uh, another row of, or another set rather, of foundations that is three deep. And that'll go all the way across. So you may notice one little thing here, and that is that I'm building this in a custom world. My initial build was actually in uh, Private World, so it's doable in Adventure Mode, but I decided to jump back over and redo the whole thing in um, a custom world so I didn't have to pull it down again. Just because the initial footage was kind of all over the place, so I thought it'd be a bit clearer if I redid things so you can really see what was going on. But uh, this does work in Adventure Mode, so have no worries about that, but it is uh, a little finicky at times, so be prepared to exercise some patience. So. Foundation is in, and as you see, it's a decent size there. This is quite big. This place is basically going to come out about as big as you can get away with building in uh, the basic budget. So we'll get some walls in next. Got a door in the center of this sort of recess section here, a couple of windows either side. I'm basically going to use the same windows all the way around. So we'll close off this section here. That's going to be our front porch when we get to it. And for now we'll run walls most of the way around, we'll just use these same windows because I quite like them. Certainly for a house it's better than the other set of windows we've got. I'm going to leave this back section over here, which is sort of the left as you look at it from the front, uh, empty for now. Because this is going to be a kind of conservatory area, whereas the rest of the place will be the main house. So that section on the left there you can see, and we'll do something different with the walls here. And we're going to put the glass walls in, because I like these. So for those who didn't manage to pick up this set of uh, greenhouse walls, there is another set that has been data mined that is due sometime over the summer, so keep your eyes out for those because you'll be able to pick them up. They're a bit different, but they are quite cool, so worth grabbing. So I'm going to flip this one wall around the other way so the outside surface faces into what will be the conservatory. So it will match up on that way, but it also means we'll be able to get a roof on out front here in a bit, but we'll come to that in just a moment. First up, I want to get some internal walls in, as there's a few other bits we need to do first. So, unfortunately, we can't double-side this new brick set for some reason. I don't know why, it just won't do it. So we're going to use the contemporary set here, which is nice and easy to do that with. And then we'll go into the replace option and swap it out for the brick one. So you've got store scrap replace at the bottom there, and we will just replace it for the set we want. So that's working quite nicely, swap these ones on the ends out for doorways, and this one in the centre is going to become a blank wall. So there we go, I'll just head around the other side and replace this one, and there we go, exactly what we want. As I say, this does all work in uh, adventure mode, it's just a little more finicky to do, a little bit more patience required. So we'll do the same thing on this set of walls here, and close up this area, run back around, close off these last two, there we go, nice and easy. Helps that the one I want's right at the top of the list as well. It makes it much easier to just scroll to that. <laughs> Always a win. So, we'll get a staircase in now. Gonna use one of these framed ones. We'll make this little back room here into a stairwell. You could leave that door off down there if you wanted, but uh, I kind of liked it, so we'll keep it. And we'll get some floors in. So, again, not going to do the bit over the top of the conservatory. We'll keep that a bit separate. But otherwise, a little bit of patience because it's jumping around a lot. And we'll get that floor into place. So, next bit, some walls for the top half. 
So for this front section, we're going to need it two half walls high, whereas the rest of the front and back, we're just going to use a single height half wall. If that makes any sense. <laughs> So we're going to use a whole bunch of windows. I do kind of wish these windows were transparent, I have to admit. But, uh, I don't know, maybe having both options would be cool. So we'll start on the sides now. We're going to need a bit more of a mix-up of uh, pieces for these. So we'll shunt that half one over and we'll put a full-size wall in here. There we go. And now I realise my slight error. I want these windows on the top half, not the bottom half. And you'll see why in just a moment. So we'll uh, figure that out. <laughs> and then... Put some windows on the top and then we'll swap these bottom ones out again just to make sure we've got the right option there we go much nicer so again we'll close off this side here a couple tall ones and then a half one and a slanted one on the top just so that we can have slanted roofs at the back and we'll also have slanted roofs at part of the front but only part of it as you'll see in just a moment so there we go get these angled pieces in just to support those slants nice same on the back and easy there we go and on to the roofing so we've got a whole bunch of new roofs in this set and they're really nice styles that concrete strip across the front in particular is very cool and we're going to use that there's a couple of pieces that aren't available to us that should have been included in the set in my opinion because it makes a few issues when we actually come to uh, use particularly that corner piece and um the thing was also really finicky when i did it in my private world the first time around it's one of the major reasons i wanted to redo this um, and there was a lot of messing around I had to do. I had to use some of the plain flat roofs and then swap them out quite a few times because it just wouldn't snap in for some weird reason. It thought it wasn't connected to anything. So, a bit finicky, this roof set. Fortunately, in the private world this time around, it was much smoother. So, uh, that's definitely a win, but patience, um, swapping things out and then snapping in what will work and changing it over will work if you're having issues with it. But uh, it does require a little bit of patience, unfortunately. So we'll get some more of these roofs in, and then we'll hop up to the top so we can really see what we're doing. There we go. I want this sort of flat section to be walled off with a concrete bit, or walled off for want of a better word. So as you see, I need to use a corner piece in the corner, funnily enough. So we'll swap that out. There we go. And we'll continue this theme as we head around. I did want to use the other fancy kind of tall brick roof pieces because they look quite cool but they didn't quite fit with the shape of this particular structure so i went with these concrete edged ones because it's quite nice and cool as well they've got a kind of almost roman villa vibe to it which is quite cool so we need one of the flat ones in the middle here and we'll put that edge one on as well as i say these plain flat ones will go in when other pieces won't sometimes if it's being a bit fussy so stick those in and then swap it if you're having problems would be my advice so, speaking of problems, as you can see, a couple of these roofs are not the right way around. They are on the top, but when you come inside, they're not the right way around. So, uh, yeah, we could do with alternate versions that do match up, in my opinion. That kind of two odd roofs bugs me a little bit. But it's as close as we're going to get, so we'll make do. However, let's uh, finish this porch off now. We've got the walls in place, and we'll sort of see where we want things to go. So, first thing I'm going to do is get some posts in here to support what will be our roof. So... A couple of foundations, a staircase, and a couple of floors. We need to set these up so that this floor is offset over the corner of the foundation below, so we can snap onto the corner like that. Hence a slightly weird shape and positioning we're doing here. Make sure those match up, otherwise you might have a pillar that's facing the other way. Now that might be uh, not matching. But in this case, we've got it right. So pull all that back out. And our posts are in place to support the roof when we put it in. Now looking at that wall in the corner there, we're going to come back to that and the reason we put it on the other way around here, because we're going to need that to support the roof, because as you can see, it's not going to snap in the way I actually want it to. So, let's uh, get an angled piece on the side here and get that roof in. So there we go. Following on from that corner, nice and tidy coming together. So, putting the roof on this conservatory here. I did think about using glass, but I decided to stick with the new set to keep it looking a bit different, you know? So, that's what we're going to do. Again, initially when I did this, it was really awkward about putting the roofs on for some reason that I don't really understand. It worked fine this time around, which is what should have happened, but again, if it doesn't, just stick flat roofs on there and then swap them afterwards. 
as um, that seemed to solve the problem last time I did it. So, on the other hand, it worked just fine here, so uh, I will take it and we'll roll on. <laughs> so, we're going to head back out the front. There's just a couple more things I want to do to complete this structure. So, I want to kind of enclose this front area a little bit more just to give it a bit more of a finished off look. So, we're going to scroll down our defenses tab and find the red brick walls. So there's, well, they don't quite match, but they're the closest thing we've got. So to put these in, you kind of need to offset them on the corner a little bit, because they don't quite go the width of the gap, which is slightly annoying. But uh, with a little bit of practice and trial and error, they all go into place. In this case, I actually didn't quite get it right on this run through, but you'll get the general idea. That looks pretty close there, so we'll try snapping these on to the end of it. Stick a gate on here. There we go. And we'll continue back with the walls on this side. Apparently it's that way around. There we go. And I do want another post in that corner, so we're actually a little too close in right now. Which is not ideal, but uh, we'll fiddle around with it and adjust it. The gate in the middle, unfortunately, kind of clips down a little bit through the ground here. Which is, I mean, it's a tough choice, really. You can either play with it for ages and try and manually get it in, in which case it'll be kind of too tall. There we go, gap's a bit too big there. But I do want this post on the end. Yeah, with the gate, you can either be too tall or you can have it clip through the ground a little bit for this particular build. But uh, I went with the ground clipping because I like the look a little better. So, with the general idea of the front wall in place, a lot of uh, adjustment required to get it quite right, but you've got the gist. We'll get some stairs on there and we'll head back inside and do the last little bit of the building that we need to do. Which is to put some internal walls up here. So... Nice and easy, as I know what I'm going to do. We're going to use a contemporary set again and double them up so we can wallpaper both sides. There's one. There's another. This is sort of starting out the bathroom area. That'll be the entrance to the master bedroom. Next one in. There we go. And now we'll come across here to close off this end for what will eventually be the kids' bedroom. So for this one, I actually want to flip this doorway here around because this is actually going to be single-skinned and have an accent wall as we're going to be working with the angled roof. But before we get to that, let's just swap these over for the brick ones again. There we go, that matches everything else. Particularly the door frames matching is what we really need here. There we go, make that a regular wall. Change this one out, we didn't really need to use the contemporary one, but as we were there anyway. This end piece here is going to be an ordinary wall, but we'll change the door out first so it's easy to run around. There we go. Now we'll make this into a wall. Oops, if you select the wall, not the empty space in the doorway. <laughs> there we go, and do the inside. Carry on with the same theme over this side. Nice, and we'll be able to wallpaper both sides now. So for this last corner, because of the angled roof at the left there, um, you can use the flamethrower trap to double-side the walls here. But it's kind of a pain in the neck, and uh, I thought having an accent wall would be a bit of fun anyway. And I'm going to do that in a couple of places in this build, so that's what we're going to go with here. So we will close that off. There's an example of it being finicky, and I had to come around this side to place that in. And with that all done, let's head off, decorate, and take a look around the finished product, shall we? So there we go. Not a massive change from the outside, at least at first glance, but we're back onto my private world here. So this is the one I built in there and uh, the adventure mode version. So it does work. And yeah, quite happy with how this came out. As I say, this place is really, really big for a camp build. In terms of sort of the budget we have available, making the decoration fill the place is a challenge with a structure this large. So it's not quite as detailed as I would have liked, but I think we managed to pull it off okay. Place looks all right. Nice little country house beside the uh, main road running up through the Cranberry Bog there. The walls out front, a little bit contrasty, which I think it kind of works and uh, kind of a little bit doesn't at the same time, but it's the best set we've got for the job. So we'll head on through the gate and a little front garden here. We've got Collectron in the corner and our entrance to the shelter. A few little bits and pieces of decoration around just to dress it up. I put the one tree in there just to make a little bit of variety and kind of break up the shape a tiny little bit, make it look a bit more interesting. A couple of cage bulb lights out front just to make the whole thing a little bit more... A bit less angular and a little bit more pleasing to the eye. And a few light little bits of decoration out here as well. 
not completely sold on that yellow front door, to be honest. But I haven't used it, and uh, I thought it would be fun to do something different. So, let's head on through into the main living room. So, big space here. We're on a 3x3 three three foundation, so this is much larger than I usually go. So, sort of spread out the decoration a little bit. Managed to make it look complete, I think. But uh, would have liked a few extra bits and pieces. A nice little bar area in there, and a piano, and a few bits and pieces on display. I don't often use the uh, display stands for the steins at the back there, but I thought it'd be fun to do. And certainly in keeping with the rest of the bar feel of that corner. So let's head on through this door here and have a little look at the conservatory, which I've made into our crafting room. We also have our play of ending in here, as you can see. So I kept that simple, and again, keeping in theme with the, the decoration being a relatively light touch because of the size of the place. It, it kind of works, it's dressed up enough, but uh, yeah, relatively small for this one. So plenty of sort of chemistry stations, crafting benches, all that good stuff down that end, all the medical stuff at one end, and then the main crafting area down at this end. So again, put the benches in so they stick out from the wall a bit, just to make it look a little bit more interesting, fill the space up a little bit more. A few bits and pieces to dress up around the uh, power armor station as well. Again, light touch on the decoration, but as I say, we are right at the limit of the budget, so got to do what we can with what we have available. And I think it looks okay. I had to run some of the wires down the inside here so I could power the decon arch. My generator's actually out back there, but uh, I meant using a few bits of conduit, which I don't generally do. I could possibly have run it all the way along with conduits inside, but uh, yeah, I tend to stick to wires, so this is what it is. I've forgotten I'd got those um, fan lamp combo things at the top there the other day and I'm quite pleased to rediscover them in my building menu so I use those in this particular build puts out a nice bit of light and it's quite cool so let's head on through to our kitchen dining room and I think this is probably my favourite space in here this kind of country kitchen vibe using a tipsy tom set there that uh, I really like doing it's uh, I'm not going to say it's exactly my dream kitchen, because you know what Fallout's like, but it's the right vibe, you know? So, quite happy I managed to set the workbenches back into the work surface here, which came up quite well. To get the sink in, I had to use the flamethrower tap to trap, rather, to destroy the work surface behind it, and then put the sink in. But for the cooking station, I kind of had to do the opposite. I put the cooking station in and destroyed that with a flamethrower trap and then snapped the Tipsy Tom pieces, the sort of worktops, back in around the destroyed cooking station and then repaired the cooking station. So it came out alright, worked quite nicely. Took a lot of time and a lot of patience, but I think it was worth it. The results are pretty cool. Nice homely country uh, house vibe. Use the... Uh, what are these from? The Thanksgiving set, these particular display cases, because they look quite good in the, the dining room, and they make the place look a little busier without using too much budget, which is a win in this build. So, came out alright. We've got a couple of bits of grass sticking through, which is vaguely annoying, but uh, uh, slight flaws of the bulldozing system, unfortunately. What can we do? The other alternative would be to raise the floors up even higher, and they're already pushing the limit of how high I like them anyway, so... Nice little seating area, fairly standard design for me that one, but I put a couple of different bits of decoration out there for a change. As uh, we're trying to conserve budget, as I keep saying. So obviously under the stairs is often a bit dead space, so I thought as a, a space for a laundry room it kind of makes a bit of sense. It's tucked out of the way. And a few little bits of extra decoration in there as well. We need a laundry hamper though, and we don't have one, which is a bit sad. So uh, I may do with a couple of suitcases. Up on the landing, this is always a, a hard space to decorate for me, and in this case I decided to make it a kind of landing office space. Relatively large open space again, so filling that up was a bit difficult, but it worked out alright. Coming into the master bedroom, we've got the fashion up wallpaper on there. I do like this, it's quite stylish, <laughs> even if I say so myself, although it makes me think a little art deco maybe. Hmm. But I do like the look, it's quite cool and uh, it gives a kind of adult vibe to the room. Not convinced about some of my carpet choices in this particular build, but the options available are not really perfect for what I had in mind anyway, so what you gonna do? So we've only got the one bathroom here, but I wanted to make it sort of an ensuite, but kind of not at the same time, I suppose. And it came out quite well. A little bigger than I often do, but uh, 
gave me a bit of extra room to make sure we've got a bath and a shower in here. As well as obviously the toilet, the sink and everything. And it's, you know, bathrooms, they're fairly plain at the best of times, I think. So quite happy with how this came out. Looks reasonably on point for that. Like my little desk area there. Again, kept that a little simpler than I would have liked to, but it looks reasonably well dressed up. Got an excuse to use the communist safe there, but I quite like that thing as well. So it looks quite cool on its own over there. So have a little look in the last of the rooms. This is the kids' bedroom. It's actually the bigger of the two bedrooms. Which is still slightly clipping through there. That I could have done something about, but you know, I'd like to have some of the environment around outside as well. Uh, loads and loads of games and stuff to keep kids busy. Little bunk beds in the corner. Decent sized bit of space, this actually. And uh, filling it up was initially quite challenging, but we've got a few big decorative pieces, as you can see, that kind of work well in a kid's bedroom. So. Quite pleased with how that came out and i put the game board uh, scoreboard rewards up on the walls as well just to keep that kids room vibe going it works quite well for that and so we've got uh, a couple of accent walls on the side as well i thought that would just mix up the style a bit otherwise the mothman wallpaper was just a bit too overbearing so having a couple of different walls worked quite nicely in there as well so there we go reasonably happy with how this came out and say decorations a little thinner than I would have liked but um, in terms of stretching it as far as it was go I'm quite pleased with what I managed to achieve there so quite happy with this little camp well I say little <laughs> quite large structure but uh, it came out quite well and gave that nice kind of country house vibe so I'm quite pleased with it so I do hope you folks enjoyed this one. If you did, please do consider dropping subs and likes and all that good stuff. I very much appreciate it. Hit that notification bell. Tons of videos coming out at the moment. Loads of stuff to cover, so do keep an eye out for those. Down below the video, as usual, you'll find social media links, a merch store, and channel memberships as well, if you're interested in supporting the channel in that way. I hugely appreciate it. It really, really helps out. A massive thank you to everyone who's done that already. And if you get a chance, as always, do join us for live streams as well. We're, of course, playing Fallout 76. We've got a new playthrough on the go at the moment doing a bit of a challenge run, which is good fun. So uh, I do hope you'll join us for that. And of course, we are playing Mass Effect 3 as well, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which is a good fun playthrough as well. So really enjoying that, and I do hope you'll join us for that too. But for now, massive thank you very much for watching. I do look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.